Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. We've got our fitness junkie leader of the quarter on this podcast. We've got Alex Short. He's been working with us for a while. He's seen a ton of progress. Um, so first and foremost, appreciate you coming on the podcast, Alex. Um, and we might as well dive right into it. So um, first question I have is, you know, what were you doing kind of before you started working with us? Like, where were you at? Kind of, kind of just paint that picture of where you were before we started working with each other. Sure. So um, overall, um, it's just not only from a physical state, but I'll kind of talk more on the mental state as well, just because there's more to the program than just like working out. So from a physical standpoint, really what I would do on a daily basis, sorry if you can hear my dog. Uh, uh, for a physical basis, really all I would do is just some basic stretching. I would just um, do maybe like a yoga thing every like three or four times a week. Just download an app, do whatever is free. Um, go out for walks. Um, I really like listening to audiobooks, so I would go out and do that usually every single day. And so nothing really intense or structured. Um, I would always see a lot of people go out and just like, oh, I'm going to the gym or like you should join a gym, but I wouldn't know what the first thing to do at a gym would be. I mean, I would know what a treadmill is or an elliptical. But as it goes for like really working out, I didn't get um, much out of it. So, and I know in the past before then, I would maybe do a fitness class every once in a while, but it was only if I had like a group of people to go with. And normally those are kind of hard to do, especially with the group of people you get with. I think it's expensive or it's just maybe it's not something you do, but hey, you never know. So, but yeah, but from the physical side of things, really very basic things nothing to really like make my day going i wasn't really physical motivated but really kind of on the mentality side of things it was just kind of as more of a um kind of like a day-to-day -day fog like you kind of just kind of just sit there and just kind of go through the motions like everyone you just wake up you go to work get off work make dinner watch tv go do something and even when there's like um, a social event you just go and just kind of hang out like it just kind of seemed very plain and normal. Like it's just like, you're just like in your normal like little area of just waiting or just doing the whole day to day. But yeah. then after really joining the program, starting out, um, be honest, it was kind of um, crazy or just some um, very, <laughs> what's the word? Um, the opposite of proactive. I don't know. I can't think of the word right now. But really it was just kind of like, I didn't want to do a lot of it because you know, it's something new. It's change and it's just, it's hard. Um, so doing a lot of it, it was just kind of like, I didn't want to do this, but kind of like after a while, you just kind of get into that same habits that you were in before, but it just, it's more clear. You're just more focused and it just kind of became more, um, attentive, just more day-to-day -day items and kind of just enjoyed it a lot yeah. more versus nice. just waking up, go to work and doing the normal day-to-day. -day. So it's, um, been kind of changing from the past, uh, year and a half. So. Yeah. Yeah, so it sounds but, like you you kind of went from from zero structure, not doing a whole lot physically to, I mean, you're you're working out at this point. You know, we've kind of like um, scaled it up as we've gone, but at this point, you're working out like six days a week, right? You're you're hitting the gym really hard. You're you're dieting like on point. So, um, so yeah, you you have changed quite a bit. Walk, walk us through like what what did you weigh? You know, when you first started, what what are you weighing now? Like, what's what's been some of that physical progress? Sure. So starting out, I believe I was around 205, 208, I think is my starting weight. And that was back in March of 2023. So a little over a year ago. Yeah. Um, and then right now, uh, this morning, I weighed in at 170, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. Throughout the whole program, though, I believe the lowest I got was down to like 165. And that was doing like a that major cut for the transformation challenge. And yeah. then once I kind of got that low, I kind of looked at myself in the mirror and was like, you're too, not like you're too thin. It's just kind of one of those things where like you need to find that overall weight that um, you feel comfortable with. And so when going kind of looking through all the progress pictures and remembering all the different weights and like months and everything, because we track all that. Um, the one I felt more comfortable with was when I was around like 170. So yeah. I think right now just staying around that weight has been very like it's a good Wait to know, because I think a lot of imagery that we see these days is very like, oh, you need to be small or buff or bulky or kind of like, this is what you need to look like. But finding that particular, what's the word I'm looking for, like, uh, I guess like body shape or um, weight and, you know, just personal preference. I just found it like, hey, this is like Mark I want to stay at and let's kind of like stay in that general area. Yeah. So that's kind of been, I mean, it took a long time to kind of figure all of that because you wouldn't know hey, what do I look like at 
190, 180, or even down to 165, you're just like, well, no, I can't be that small anymore. So it's just, yeah. it's really nice to kind of see the overall range of everything and getting, um, seeing what I like to be at. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to unpack some of that because, you know, for the listeners, Alex started out doing everything at home, right? Um, he was doing just body weight resistance bands for, for a really long time. Honestly, like I would say, what was it like nine months before we even got you kind of even just using about, yeah, before dumbbells, and then we got you in the gym now. So, I mean, you you got down to that 165 all just from home, which is which is pretty awesome. 40 pounds lost working out at home, right? Um, and then, like you said, then you kind of saw, okay, well, I want to take it to the next level as far as um, building muscle. You didn't necessarily want to be that like skinny or, or lean. It was like I want to I want to shift more your focus towards um, building muscle and kind of just maintaining while we lose the body fat, continue to build muscle is where we kind of made that shift, um, which is really cool. And I think that's a, a big thing to point out for people is like you know it's not just all about the scale. Um, you know at this point it's more so body composition that we're tracking with you. We got your body fat percentage uh, measured, which I wish we had it at the beginning so we could know kind of how much body fat you've lost at this point because I know it's a lot. <laughs> I mean, you look at the pictures, you look drastically different. Um, but yeah, that's kind of just where our focus has been now with everything. So um, just wanted to point out for everyone that I mean you you're someone doing everything at home, making that much progress. I mean, guys even if you can't make it in the gym every day it's like there's no excuse so um but yeah that's awesome man Herb, yeah, you no, have, thank you yeah for sure herb anything to to kind of piggyback off that or any questions you got on on kind of the progress that alex has made specifically well you know again it's been a joy working with alex i mean yeah. you know you, you give somebody a little information they take off and run with it that's yeah. it's amazing to see alex do you how much of what you learned once you got into a program how much of it do you think was mindset over the physical because a lot of people think it's physical how did you what did you find about the mindset being involved oh it's a like it's like 98 percent mindset like um <laughs> i don't know I, it's really hard to explain because whenever you get into it, i think one of the hardest things with this program or any, any fitness program is really just finding the time with yourself as well as like in your head to go and do the workout because a big part of just going and doing the workout is just really showing up and be like, okay, there's a 10 pound, 20 pound, 30 pound, however much pound of weight that you're looking at and just picking it up. If you don't want to pick up that weight in your head, you're not going to pick it up. Like it can be five pounds and you're like, you know what? I don't want to lift that today. Guess what? Your body's not going to do it because you're telling yourself over and over that you're not going to do it. Yeah. So um, what I find when it just comes to mindset, even if it's one of those days where you just don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to work out, just walking to the gym, getting there and just saying, hey, I made a commitment just to get there every day. Even if you don't want to lift weights, you just walk on the treadmill or do like some like type of cardio or something. You still did something that day and it's better doing one thing versus doing nothing because in the next day, you're going to have that exact same feeling of, well, I didn't do it yesterday. Why should I do it today? And so you kind of just get into that loop of not wanting to do things. And that's kind of where you destroy yourself. So when it comes to, or at least for me, that's how it goes. But um, as it goes for just some additional mindset on the physical side, um, I really enjoy the aftermath, I guess, of the physical side, but also comes with the mental thing. So for example, we did a, um, a meetup last year in July where we went to this really fancy gym. And I couldn't lift a 30 pound weight to save my life. Like I just looked at it and I'm like, I can't lift that. I've never lifted a weight before. Why can't I then? But then I was like, okay, maybe just these little eight pound weights. No, it's fine. But then now I just go to the gym. I'll get a 30 pound weight. I'm like, all right, it's 30 pounds. Who cares? I can lift that any day. And then like I go to the 60 pound weights. I'm like, I look at it. My brain's like, okay, I know that's heavy. And it's a little struggle getting it. But after working with it, you kind of get used to where, oh, I can do this. And so once you realize you can do it every day, you can lift something that you didn't think you could lift before, even that you couldn't do before, it kind of keeps you going on what all you need to do that day. So 100% or like, I guess, 98% mindset, because you still need that physical aspect to, you know, sure. lift something or to walk and do something. So no, it's a very big portion of doing any type of program, especially on the fitness side. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, like, listen, to Alex, because I wanted to point this out too. Um, like you said, we've been working with each other for 
coming up on a year and a half, I think. Um, and and you've literally only missed one or two workouts on True Coach in that year and a half, which is amazing, man. I mean, uh, that's pretty damn good. So, um, so that's a good testament to to your mindset and and yeah, just being able to um consistently make it happen every single day, no matter if you feel like it or not, right? So, um, really good stuff. What my question, my next question for you, Alex, is what were some of the misconceptions or maybe limiting beliefs that you had before you started that you don't have at this point? Sure. No, that's a good, that's a good question because when I first started, um, no offense to you, Kate, or the overall program, <laughs> I kind of took it as a joke um, just because of like how we met. Cause I didn't, I didn't meet you by going to a gym. I wasn't looking for a trainer. I wasn't someone who was actively like, Let's go like as I mentioned earlier, I just did like a couple stretches and then I felt like I was fine. Yeah. Um, when you pretty much reached out via well, we've met on LinkedIn, I thought I'm like, why is a fitness person reaching me out onto like <laughs> people who are asking me to go do like tech jobs for them? So it was just it was kind of weird. And so then I'm like, all right, let's just figure this out. Yeah. And so I kind of took it all with like a grain of salt because I knew doing some type of physical activity, I knew I, I would lose some weight. I would do some type of um, program or it's like, oh, hey, go eat like chicken and avocados every day. Like that's like, there's so many stereotypes that kind of just like came to my brain whenever like I first started. Yeah. So I'm gonna be honest, I took it kind of as a joke starting out. But then after maybe two or three months about it, I kind of like, okay, this program, like I can get into this because it wasn't something that was Hey, day one, you need to go and lift 50 pounds 300 times and eat nothing but yeah. chicken and rice. Like it wasn't something that was so, this is what you need to change your entire life for. It was very um, progressional. And so yeah. just starting out just like on those small changes and then getting into just the at-home items and making it super easy for me to get into that kind of made the overall process a little bit better. Yeah, so, yeah, cool. So, yeah. so, so just the kind of the fact that we meet you where you're at, right? And it's not like a cookie cutter, like you got to do this, this, and this. It's like, this is what you have available. We're going to meet you there. And we're going to kind of progress you from where you're at and, and make it fit your lifestyle is kind of what you're saying. Um, and yeah, you <laughs> kind of started out as a joke and then you you see you're making progress and you're like, okay, this is no joke. This is this is serious. So um, I like it. Sweet, man. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Um, how else, of, you know, and I know you already kind of talked about um, some of the way your mindset has changed and things like that. Um, but how else other than physically do you think you've changed during this process? Like you personally, mentally, um, just emotionally, like any, anything, like how do you feel like you've changed through the process of this whole transformation? Yeah. So the physical one's obvious. I mean, there's pictures, there's proof, all that good stuff. But really when it comes to more of not just like a um, mental and emotional side, but also kind of like lifestyle wise, when going through, when you find out that you can work out every single day and like benefit yourself that you're working towards you, it kind of makes you realize, not like in a narcissistic type of way, but really that how much importance of focusing on you every day is like super important. Cause that's kind of like why I really enjoy working out the six times a day and having the one day of cardio. Um, is because it gives me an hour, hour and a half each day where I'm just with me, with the weights, with whatever it is I'm doing with, like I'm working out whatever I need to, and I'm not having to deal with like, cause weights don't argue back. I'm sorry, but like any person <laughs> you talk to, they're going to have some type of opinion or even to yourself. If you talk to yourself <laughs> about something, it's not going to happen. But like when you're working out or doing that every single day, it's like you're improving yourself and it's a hundred percent towards you and being, um, what's the word, um, invested in the overall process of you getting better. Um, when it comes to just, and once you start realizing that other things like in your life, just kind of just go into play. So, um, part of like, after getting with you guys, like what, six, seven months, um, I got a dog. She's been great. Love her to death. And it's just kind of been like, I've been able to progress myself even further on newer life situations because I was like okay what's the next part of your overall like life goals versus just kind of just staying stagnant and stale it kind of wants me to put more investment in myself and pay more focus and attention to myself but then when you also think about others and when you like talk to them and like hang out with them and they talk about let's say 
not necessarily negative items or just like changes in their lives. You feel more appreciative to how much work they put into how they've progressed because you yourself have experienced so much like not necessarily a hardship, but like the amount of progress you put in yourself and you see it, you kind of see that same progress in others and you appreciate them more. And so it all kind of just snowballs or builds up on itself on all this like um, positivity and life changes and all that good stuff. So it's kind of just yeah. makes you more optimistic. For sure. Oh, that's awesome, man. There's a lot, a lot to unpack there. But yeah, one, one point that I think you made um, is that, you know, going through a process like this, focusing on yourself, seeing that progress, seeing how, how investing in yourself creates that progress and kind of breaking past comfort zones can lead to a lot of good. Sounds like that's had some carryover into other areas of your life. Cause um, we talk about it a lot. It's like when you, when you learn some specific skills through this fitness journey, it, it's transferable to a lot of different areas. So like, like you said, investing in yourself first, kind of pouring into yourself, that's something that's going to help you in a lot of different ways, breaking past comfort zones. That's going to help you in a lot of different ways, goal setting and like striving for more and like not getting complacent, right. In your fitness journey, um, that you're going to start noticing, okay, like I, I learned that skill. It's maybe even subconscious, but then you start transferring that to other areas and then you're like, okay, how else can I level up and, um, kind of break past comfort zones in, in other areas of my life. Um, and you're noticing it in other people. So yeah, that's, that's really cool. Herb, anything to kind of piggyback on any of that? No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that we're having this conversation because, you know, again, preconceived ideas when I meet somebody or they, you know, we talk about what we do for a living and they're like, oh, so you count reps for people and put on, <laughs> you know, diets and stuff. It's like, I would, I, I'm guessing, you know, paraphrasing what you were saying, Alex, but the, when you get started on this kind of a journey physically, do, do you feel like it just woke you up on all the other areas in your life that you just started noticing things like you become more aware of what you're capable of, what you want, and just, you know, that you can actually go after it and do it, you know, did you, did you, did you feel like, you know, that it, it, it drained over, like Kate said, into other parts of your life and made you better, you know, employee made you a better, you know, aunt, uncle, the whole bit. Yeah. So I would say it wouldn't. It wasn't something that was immediate. It was a very progressive progress. Um, it's not like I just woke up one morning and was just like, I know the answer to everything. It's just yeah. kind of just like small things that just um just happen as you go. And I think a big piece of me also realizing it is that everything takes time. Everything's just going to come into place eventually, even if it's something that happens now, or just kind of having that idea of not everything is as instant for gratification because I know it's a big piece these days where I want it now type yeah. of situation, but it's not going to happen because we see so many other individuals move progress like, oh, hey, I got lucky or I just did this in one month. You can do it too, but it's not the case. Everyone's different. Everyone has different situations. But as it goes and how that filters over to other parts of like my life, it's just a lot of concepts that you not necessarily like um see with um like weightlifting or even just with exercising is hold on my train stopped um sorry i oh, and going off into uh, additional uh aspects of my life really it's just kind of we mentioned earlier it's just like you're able to do something like you figure out that i can do this even if it doesn't take today Maybe it takes a month for me to get there, but you can still do it and achieve that. And it kind of puts you through other items. But also when talking with you guys, um, you also kind of realize overall with longevity of your life where you talk about, hey, like you only got one life, let's make it great. And so when you kind of talk about like, hey, like how do you become a role model to your niece or nephew or your siblings or your friends or even your coworkers for people who look up to you, it's kind of where you want to make that same positivity and progress contagious where you're just like, hey, guys, like, let's just go do something positive or don't think of something so negatively. Or if there is something that's negative, like, for example, when I have conversations with some of my coworkers and they're having a hard day, I always tell them to just stop talking to me or stop chatting and go have a snack. And they're just like, <laughs> why? I'm like, no, just go take it. Like, go up, walk five steps to your kitchen, take out a snack, eat it, then come back. And then we'll talk about it then. And they're like, fine. And so then they leave and come back and they just, it makes them feel better. It just kind of makes them like take a break over the overall situation. And it kind of also makes you think about that where 
um, even, I guess, kind of put it back with exercising. It's like you do something hard, take a small break or do like a lap around the gym, go back and do it again. So it's just being able to kind of pass on those like new ideas and um, um, word, um, can't think of it, um, onto well, other people and kind of like make them progress as well. It's actually kind of exciting. And what I also thought about, even with just like exercising and progressing, like I would think I'd be telling everyone like every single day, like, oh, I benched this much today or I ran this many miles or like kind of like, I mean, you get excited about it. It is impressive that people can do that. But I thought I would like be more like in people's faces about it, but I'm not. Like most of the time when I talk to someone about even this program or how I'm doing, I talk more about how much better I feel versus how much I'm benching, if that makes sense. So this is that's kind of where I've kind of gone into it. This is why you're the leader of the quarter, Alex. Because leadership is 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 not something that is bestowed upon you. It's something that you you know, you exercise to help other people, you try to, you know, uh, you know, share your experiences, help them make less mistakes. Because you, again, when you start feeling better about yourself, you want to share it with other people. This is, this is such an amazing thing, the fitness journey. And, you know, Kate and I get little giggles when we're talking to new people, because all they're focused on is shit, I got to lift the dumbbell and I got to eat chicken, right? And there's so much more that's coming at you nothing's going to happen accidentally, you know, and uh, I, I love to hear your journey where you came in, you know, like I said, to the extreme where you're working out at home by yourself, right? And now all of a sudden, you're in the gym crushing it, leading other people. That's, that's a huge progression, Alex. And I think you should be very proud of everything you've accomplished. Thank you. No, I am. It's, it's, um, I always get excited whenever I do um, progress pictures, even like every yeah. week, like the smallest changes. I'm like, look, I'm doing better. Like it's, it's, even if it's the smallest, like tiniest thing, I'm still just like, look, I'm doing great. Yeah. So it's just like kind of like self-motivating and just seeing all the results just go through where I've been and where it's going to is just, just very exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Man. Yeah. It's, it's those, it's the little progress, right? It's me and Herb always talk about it's the little wins that really keep you going. People don't realize that they think it's like, you know, that end outcome. They're just always so fixated on it. It's like, you know, if you can just focus, like you said, on those weekly little wins, just seeing that progress, just stacking them up. That's what's going to keep you going and build that momentum. So um, my qu my last question for you, Alex, is what do you want to accomplish in this next year, in these next 12 months? Where, where do you want to see yourself? Yeah. So I want to be honest. So from our last um, meetup, you gave us those pocket goals to kind of have that same, like, hey, write down your next 12 month or six month goals. Mm -hmm. I haven't filled it out. Uh, reason yeah. being is just like, it's very hard to kind of determine on what those um, goals are. Um, I know there's a whole like smart goal items, but really when I think about these goals, it's kind of, I don't want to make it like definite, like this is what I'm going to do. I don't want like a lot of wiggle room, but just a little bit, but really a lot of it has just been unknown. Cause like from a fitness standpoint, you can kind of just say, Hey, I want to be at, it's not necessarily number driven or number goals, just as of right now in the next year, like, Hey, I want you like, let's say just bench 200 pounds. You're like, okay, that's a great goal. We can get there. There's a progress. You're like, there's a whole like set to it. But when you think about not just with fitness goals, but overall life goals, it's like, okay, do I want to move into a house? Okay. Well, where's that house going to be? If it's like, Oh, do I want to like, um, get a new car? Like, no, there's nothing like more material things, but even when you kind of think of a more like personal basis, it's like, Hey, what type of journey do I want? Do I want to go to like travel internationally to a place I've always wanted to go to? Do I want to go and just spend three weeks on a beach somewhere? Like just kind of when you think of all those individual personal things, it's, so there's a lot of um, reflection involved and I haven't, like I've done it like kind of in the past, but not so in depth now. Cause really when thinking about like what's coming to the future and kind of like what's happened, um, in the past for me, it's just kind of very, I want to make sure my next like life goals or things that are changing are very more, again, focused towards, again, not narcissistic, but like, it's more focused towards me and what I want to do to make my life better and enjoy it. Because it's really just finding out what those small details are to finish those goals to progress my life. So it's not that I don't want a goal in 12 months. It's not that I'm slacking off on my fitness goals because I do have those now, now, 
um, where we want to like lift more, run more, be more like be healthier. And, but on top of that, I want those personal goals because last year's personal goals got those done. Cause I knew exactly what I didn't, cause I knew what I didn't want, not now of what I do want. And so that's kind of the harder part of getting rid of all the old stuff, decluttering. And then now what's that new, that new thing for me. So yeah. um, right now it's going to, I'm still working on it, trying to figure out what those individual small things are. I write them down every day as I figure them out. And then hopefully I can get them all in this nice little package and then uh, put down that final, write it on paper and we get that yeah. new year goal in there. Yeah. I know you're a reflection guy. I know you're a journaler, you know, you, you journal quite a bit. So be thinking about it, man. I'll, I'm, I'm excited to see what this next 12 months has. Um, and I know that once, once you figure that out for yourself and you paint that picture, you visualize it. I know you're going to make it happen because you've proved it, you know, over the last year and a half that that's what you do. So I'm excited for you, man. Um, guys, hope you got a lot of value out of this. Um, you know, Alex is, like I said, he's, he's the leader of the quarter. He's a perfect example of someone that makes it happen. He, he figures out what those goals are, what he wants. He gets after it. He, he makes that happen. So, um, hope you got a lot out of this guys. Let us know if you have any questions, um, put this stuff into practice right away. Like we always say, like, the Elevate Everyday podcast is not about just listening. It's it's not about mental masturbation. <laughs> it's about taking execute. what you yeah. It's about execution, right? Like take what you learn in here, put it into practice right away. So, a lot of good takeaways in this one, guys. Um, but other than that, we'll see you in the next episode. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Thanks, Alex. No problem. All right, bye, everyone. Peace. All right. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.